The first step in this project will be to create an ordering screen that takes the basic details of an order. How many cupcakes they want, what kind they want, and whether there are any special customizations. Before we get into the UI, we need to start by defining the data model. Previously, we've used at state for simple value types and at observed object for reference types. And we've also looked at how it's possible to have an observable object class containing structs inside it so we can get the benefits of both. Here we're going to take a different solution. We're going to have a single class that stores all our data, which will be passed from screen to screen. This means all screens on our app share the same data, which will work really well, as you'll see. For now, this class won't need many properties. It'll need the type of cakes, plus a static array of all possible options. Then, how many cakes the user wants to order, whether the user wants to make special requests, which will show or hide extra options in our UI, whether the user wants extra frosting on their cakes, and whether the user wants to add sprinkles on their cakes. Each of those needs to update the UI when changed, which means we have to mark them with at published and make the whole class conform to observable object. So, please make a new Swift file called order.swift and give it this code. Class order, observable object, static let types equals an array of vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, and rainbow. At published, var type equals zero. At published, var quantity equals three. At published, var special request enabled equals false. At published, var extra frosting equals false. At published var add sprinkles equals false. We can now create a single instance of that inside content view by adding this property. At observed object var order equals order. That's the only place the order will be created. Every other screen in our app will be passed that property so they all work with the same data. We're going to build the UI for the screen in three sections, starting with cupcake type and quantity. This first section will show a picker letting users choose from vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, and rainbow cakes. Then a step with the range three through 20 to choose the amount. All that will be wrapped inside a form, which is itself inside navigation view, so we can provide a title. Put this into the body of content view now. Navigation view, form, section, picker, select your cake type, selection, dollar order dot type for each zero to order dot types dot count text order dot types dollar zero stepper value dollar order dot quantity in three three twenty text number of cakes order dot quantity dot navigation bar title, cupcake corner. Before we add the second and third sections, I'd like you to build and run the code, then try it out. Our two form field should work fine, but you might, might, see a regular annoying message in Xcode. For each range int int text, count for, is not equal to its initial count, one. I say might, because this feels like another Swift UI bug. Even though our for each is using fixed data, i.e. the number of items in our order.types array, SwiftUI seems to be having a hard time working with it. If you don't see the error, you have nothing to worry about. But if you do see it, then I want to show you how to resolve it. We have to give it an explicit identifier. So, modify your for each to this. id backslash dot self. That clears up the problem entirely, but honestly, I'm hoping the error will just go away in a future SwiftUI update. The second section of our form will hold three toggle switches, bound to special request enabled, extra frosting, and add sprinkles respectively. However, the second and third switches should only be visible when the first one is enabled, so we'll wrap them in a condition. Add this second section now. Section, toggle is on, dollar order, dot special request enabled, dot animation. Text, any special requests. Then if order dot special request enabled, toggle is on dollar order extra frosting. 
text, add extra frosting. Then toggle is on, dollar order dot add sprinkles. Text, add extra sprinkles. Go ahead and run the app again and try it out. Notice how I bound the first toggle with an animation modifier attached, so that the second and third toggles slide in and out smoothly. However, there's another bug, and this time it's one of our own making. If we enable special requests, then enable one or both of extra frosting and extra sprinkles, then disable the special requests, our previous special request selection stays active. This means if we re-enable special requests, the previous requests are still active. This kind of problem isn't hard to work around if every layer of your code is aware of it. If the app, your server, your database, and so on are all programmed to ignore the values of extra frosting and add sprinkles when special request enabled is set to false. However, a better idea, a safer idea, is to make sure that both extra frosting and add sprinkles I'll reset to false when special request enabled is set to false. We can make this happen by adding a did set property observer to special request enabled. Add this now. Did set. If special request enabled is equal to false, extra frosting equals false, and add sprinkles equals false. Our third section is the easiest because it's just going to have a navigation link pointing to the next screen. We don't have a next screen just yet, but we can add it quickly enough. Create a new Swift UI view called address view and give it an order observed object property like this. At observed object, var order, order. Then the preview, order, order. We'll make that more useful shortly, but for now it means we can return to contentview.swift and add the final section for our form. This will create a navigation link that points to an address view, passing in the current order object. So please add this final section now. Section, navigation link, destination, address view, order, order. Text, delivery details. That completes our first screen. So give it a try one last time before we move on. You should be able to select your cake type, choose a quantity, and toggle all the switches just fine. 